Hi, this is Ellie Fishman, and welcome to our uh, look at hematuria. And we were, stalked, we were talking about renal vein thrombosis at the very end of last talk, and I decided to stop there. Renal vein thrombosis is interesting. We kind of don't see all that many cases. Obviously, most of the time, renal vein thrombosis is when you have a renal cell carcinoma and you're looking for vascular extension. But we talk about, it can be seen in nephrotic syndrome in about 20% of cases. It's also associated with abdominal surgery, trauma, tumor invasion, and retroperitoneal processes. When you look at the causes of renal vein thrombosis, it's numerous. Hypercoagulability states are one of the causes. So lupus, any inherited uh, hypercoagulability state. Dehydration, that was a classic thing. Patients found dehydrated. You wanna look carefully there. Trauma, tumors, abscesses, left ovarian vein thrombosis with extension upward are all things you need to consider. This article by uh, Yimin Wang, CT is currently the imaging method of choice for diagnosing renal vein thrombosis. It's non-invasive, less expensive, and can be performed quickly with high accuracy, high sensitivity, and specificity. So what am I looking for? You're looking for the renal vein. Now, sometimes you pick it up incidentally. We had no really good cause for this. This patient had abdominal pain and this was probably the reason. Look at the renal vein. The left renal vein is dilated. There's some rim enhancement, but it's totally thrombosed. It's interesting that despite the extensive thrombosis, the perfusion changes in the kidney are very minimal. Another example here, look at the thrombus in the patient's left renal vein. Very nicely shown in this example. And the kidneys, the left kidney is about the same size as the right. Sometimes the best way of looking at renal vein thrombosis is this case in the coronal. You see main renal vein and down into the lower left renal vein. Again, it may not be occlusive, which explains why the kidneys look like they enhance normally. And this was an interesting case of a patient who had a right nephrectomy for renal cell carcinoma. And on routine follow-up, we found this near total thrombosis of the left renal vein, but it does not change the perfusion of the kidney. The patient was anticoagulated and did fine, but you could see it's something at times you don't think about. Now, another thing in terms of vascular, I like to show this case. This is why I'm always scared with non-contrast CTs. You look at this unimpressive hematuria, gross hematuria. There's no stones, what would you do? Here's a coronal, does anything bother you? Well, you do the arterial phase imaging and guess what? You miss this giant renal AV malformation. And AV malformations like this are not seen on non contrast scans. They often don't have mass effect, they often don't have any change. Here it is on coronal, and you can see some of the branching to the lower pole renal artery. Again, you look back at the coronals, should you say it looks a little bit full by the pelvis, but no one did. So this is one of the reasons why we need to get contrast enhanced scans. If the contrast, the non-contrast is negative, yes, there's no stones, but look how much you can miss. You can miss tumors from renal cells to the transitional cells. You can miss infarction, you can miss infection, and you can miss vascular malformations. This patient had a procedure that had the, you read horoscopy because they said it was hematuria and they didn't have a cause. They biopsied a few times and they said, wait a second, something's wrong. We gave contrast, we found the vascular malformation. Renal AVMs are rare lesions and may be acquired or congenital. Acquired, a rare, hematuria is the major and most common symptom. Other manifestations is hypertension, LVH, cardiac failure, and abdominal pain are usually associated with these AVMs. Here's just a great example. Look at the non-contrast scan. The renal veins look weird. They look kind of big, but the kidneys look like there's full in this in the pelvis, but maybe that's parapelvic cysts, but it's not the low density of parapelvic cysts typically. But I'm not sure what's going on. What if I give you the excretory phase? The renal veins still look big. I don't see any thrombus. The pelvises look full, but I'm not sure what am I really looking at. And here it is on the coronal. Maybe it's just parapelvic cysts that are somewhat dense. I don't know, you know, there's a couple more images. But if you had the arterial phase, look at this. Look at the AV shunting. Look at the vascular enhancement of the venous structures and arterial structures simultaneously with these AV fistula to, in both kidneys. 
Look at the size of the renal veins. Look how the renal veins drain up into the IVC on the arterial map. Beautifully shown on the volume rendering as well. Just impressive, impressive examples. And you could see renal AV malformations are uncommon, but here's one in the right kidney in this patient. Nicely shown in cinematic, and you can see the AV malformation there. And if I take things away, you can see the vascular malformation. So we think about vascular malformations post-trauma, perhaps, like stab wounds. But we've seen a lot of cases like this where there's no really good history of anything. With this case, again, look at the right kidney. Look at that vascular malformation present in the kidney. Look at it draining on the coronal or on the MIP. Beautiful example. So it's something you need to think about and something you need to be careful with. Now, when we talk about hematuria, we think about the kidney, but we need to look at the ureters and look at the bladder. Bladder cancer is indeed very common. 72,000 plus new cases every year in the U.S. CT has a high sensitivity and specificity. Now, the thing about CT is typically we speak about CT and bladder cancer. We talk about staging, looking for nodes, looking for spread. My question is, how often do you pick up bladder cancer as an incidental finding? Sometimes it's the cause of hematuria, so maybe that's not incidental. That's just you're looking for hematuria. Other times it's an incidental finding, and I've, we've spoken about errors in diagnosis, how one of the most common errors is not to distend the bladder, and so when you give IV contrast, you miss that small incidental bladder cancer, which can kill you later. We don't think about bladder cancers as being hypervascular, but they do enhance. You can see it on the, the early phase, bladder distended, four centimeter mass in the bladder, mildly vascular. And here it is on the arterial phase and on the excretory phase. Sometimes things are obvious on the excretory. Sometimes things are more obvious early. I think at times smaller tumors may only be seen on the arterial because on the venous phase, you get the partial averaging. You don't really see it. The contrast in the bladder will cover things up. And you can see here just a beautiful example as you look at the coronal views. We wrote an article a number of years ago with Shiva Rahman, presence of a discrete bladder mass or nodule should be considered suspicious for malignancy, uh, although a discrete filling defect may not be, may be difficult to appreciate in delayed imaging when the nodule is large. You need to look very carefully. We also need to look at the bladder. If you look at the image on your left, this hematuria, high density, assuming the patient uh, didn't have uh, prior contrast. Now this could be from a renal cell, it can be from a ureter, but then when you look a little bit more carefully toward the dome, you see a jet. So it's actively bleeding in the bladder. And you look at it on the delayed, it's blood clots in the bladder layering out. And that was an example of a small bladder cancer. Or this example, a patient had a traumatic insertion of a Foley, a lot of blood in the bladder. When you go back and you give IV contrast, look at the distended bladder with the blood. But look at the active extravasation. You clearly see the active extravasation. So if I'm looking for hematuria, we want to scan through the pelvis, particularly in older patients. Obviously, someone under 35, it may not be as critical because bladder cancer, short of trauma, a bladder cancer period is unusual. Other cause of hematuria, like trauma, it's a different scenario. But for tumors, it would be unusual. But look at the active contrast extravasation showed nicely on the MIP imaging as I show it to you through a range of views. So you can see the importance of really what we're describing and how we're looking at things. Very, very important to really understand that possibility. It works out very nicely in that regard. Now, um, we did speak before about bladder cancers, and I'm not going to go through that in any detail. As we said, that's one of the things we notice very frequently is that it's easy to pick up incidental bladder cancers. Uh, you need to be careful. We particularly are seeing incidental bladder cancers on patients who are older who were doing aortas because we give a thousand cc's or so of water so the bladder is distended and then even the smallest tumors under one cm are very easy to come up with and very easy to see. So we've gone through basically three talks talking about hematuria. 
Now, I have to admit we did not spend a lot of time on tumors because we have specific talks on tumors. But I wanted you to think about hematuria and all the things you need to look at, the importance of designing the protocols. You need the non-contrast. You need the arterial. The older patient's arterial through the pelvis looking for bladder. Clinical history, gross versus rather gross or macroscopic versus microscopic becomes very important in defining the optimal protocols. You need to be very careful about the limited protocols. Non-contrast only, only answers a few questions like there's no stones, there's so much you're going to miss. Communication of radiology with the ER docs and with urology becomes critical, especially in the ER. The ER docs want less and less. We need to focus on, we want, not that we want more and more, we want the correct diagnosis and so designing things becomes very critical. Communication is always critical. We work closely with urology. I got a joint appointment in urology. They're terrifically nice people even if they didn't give me a joint appointment. But again, it's a strategy. And hopefully over these three talks, we gave you some strategy. There are additional talks on CTSS on the kidney and um, in 2019 in our most recent upgrade of our app, you'll see some talks there. Also, we have thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of cases in teaching file on CTSS. You should look at those cases for familiarity. And we have many more kidney cases, one of our top features on Instagram. So now I've told you everything you need to know about the kidney, about Facebook, about Instagram, and about CTSS. And with that, have a great day. If you liked what you heard here today, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and visit our website, ctss.com, for lectures, quizzes, pearls, and more. Also, be sure to check out our apps that are available for free on the Apple Store. All links are in the description box below.